we will start with some graph algorithms so i'm going to discuss a simple algorithm breadth first search okay all right so how does breadth first search work so you're given a graph let's say that these are the nodes right one two let me just number them one two three four five six and seven right so this is a graph now a graph can be either directed or undirected right so let's just assume this is directed okay all right and this is the direction of the edges now how does breadth first search work well we are given some root node okay so let's say that in this case our root node is node 1 yeah so what do we want to do we want to do a breadth first traversal of this graph right so how does a breadth first traversal work well uh, let's first understand it without any algorithm right so this is how it works you start with the root node right and then in the first step you visit all the neighbors of this node right so what are the neighbors so it's 2 3 and 4 right so you will visit all these three nodes so all the nodes which have not been visited before right so the root has is labeled with the level 0 right so you give levels to each node right what level it belongs to in the breadth first traversal right so all the neighbors of 1 now belong to level 1 right and what do you do in the next step well there's no point looking at the neighbors of 1 anymore right because you've already visited all the neighbors of 1 but there are neighbors of 2 3 and 4 which are unexplored so what you'll do is in in the next step what you'll do is you'll look at all the neighbors of 2 3 and 4 right by neighbors we mean outgoing edges right neighbors which are connected by outgoing edges so we look at all the neighbors of level 1 nodes at level 1 and we realize that these are nodes 5 and 6 right these are the two nodes that are neighbors of uh, outgoing neighbors of level 1 right so we label them 2 right and then in the next step what do we do now we again don't need to look at level 0 and level 1 neighbors right because we've already covered them in the previous iterations so we just look at the neighbors of level 2 and it turns out to be 7s so we give it level 3 right so this is the standard breadth first search i hope all of you are already familiar with it right okay so now what we want to do is let's say we have a very huge graph right which can't be stored on a single pc or you want to compute breadth first search quickly so how would you go about implementing this in parallel right so we'll discuss that some definitions to begin with so at any iteration right the last set of nodes that were labeled with the latest level right we call that the frontier it's nothing but you're essentially saying in the next iteration i'm going to explore all the neighbors of the frontier right frontier is kind of like the direction in which you're progressing okay all right so you have something called level you will start with level zero so you'll maintain an array d okay so what is this d array this is the distance from the root right or the level of the particular node in the BFS tree. So there will be an entry corresponding to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right, for all the nodes. So initially, what will be the levels at the beginning before you start? So node 0 will have level 0, and every other node will have level infinity, right? You have not determined its level yet the root node where you're starting from that that is the starting level which is zero yeah okay and we'll start off with the frontier as well what is the frontier initially the frontier is just the root node right that's the node that you're going to start with you're going to start looking at the neighbors of this node right so your frontier is so a one here indicates that that node is in the current frontier and zero indicates it's not in the frontier right you could even use boolean arrays over here okay so this is my current frontier and now what do i want to do while i have not visited all the nodes how do i determine that i have not visited all the nodes we'll we'll come to that okay yeah so what do i do 
I need to set up a new array of the next level of frontiers. Let me call that f prime. This is going to be my new frontier for the next iteration, right? So I have to determine f prime. The first thing I need to do is I need to store this graph somewhere, right? So how do I store this graph? Well, there are standard data structures for storing this graph. We'll use a simple matrix notation for the adjacency matrix. Okay. So what does this look like? Well, you have a row corresponding to each node and a column corresponding to each node. Okay, there is no node zero, sorry. Let me fix this. Let me just get rid of this, right? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first row, right? The row corresponding to one. And we are going to put a one if there is an edge that is connecting this one to some vertex over here, right? So in this graph, the first node is connected to two, three, and four, right? So I'll have a zero over here, I'll have a one, one, one here, and zero, zero, zero. Is that clear? Right? It's just the adjacency matrix, right? I'm sure you've uh, studied this before. So again, what will the row of two look like? Well, it has an outgoing edge to three and five, right? One and one. What about three? It just has an outgoing edge to five. Four, it just has an outgoing edge to six. Five, just an outgoing edge to seven. And six also just has an outgoing edge to seven. And seven does not have any outgoing edges, right? So that's the graph I get, yeah? Okay, so this is for a directed graph, right? So this we are considering a directed graph. So for a directed graph, what is the matrix? The matrix has entries a i j, where a i j is equal to one if i comma j belongs to the graph, right? Or more precisely, it, it belongs to the edge set of the graph, right? Yeah, what happens if it's an undirected graph? Then for every i j, if a i j is one, then a j i will also be one. So it will be a symmetric matrix, right? Okay. So for the time being, we are just going to talk about directed matrices. Okay, let's come back here. Yeah, there is no zero here, right? Let me fix this. So there is no zero. So actually initially, node one has a level zero and it's in the frontier, yeah? Okay. Now what do I want to do? I want to set up F prime. So when will an entry of F prime be set, right? So let's look at this adjacency matrix again. And let's say that there is a node which is currently in the frontier, right? So let me call this f of j. This is basically node j, right? Node number, node id j, right? And let's say that fj is equal to 1. So it, it's in my current frontier, right? So a new node will be visited in this iteration if what? If I find some node which is in the current frontier and there is an edge from this node to this new node, right? So let me call this node K. So F prime of K, the new frontier, it will be added to the frontier will be equal to one if, if what happens? Okay, so let me just use some other temporary variable for now. So let me just set up a new array u, right? Uh, eventually this will, I will use this to update the new frontier, okay? So uk, it, it's a candidate to be in the new frontier if what happens? If there is some node 
if there is some j such that it is in the frontier and there is an edge from that node to me yeah is this clear so i i, I am interested in any such node right so what does this mean more precisely this means that if i just look at it carefully and write it in boolean notation using or and and clauses so what is this so uk is nothing but the kth node will be 1 if there is any j such that f of j is set right equal to 1 so I'm just assuming 0 is false and 1 is true, right? So you can always set up Boolean arrays instead of 0, 1 arrays, right? And matrices. And A, J, comma K is also true. Clear? And this is odd over all Js, right? So U's give me all the candidates for the next level. So this is not the new frontier. Why is that? So we'll just talk about that, but let me just uh, note down this notation here. So instead of F prime, let me first create a U array, right? Okay, one more thing before I, I do that, right? So what is happening over here? Let's look at this a little more carefully. So if I look at this matrix, right? This is my A matrix, yeah? And this is my F vector. A is a matrix, F is a vector, right? For now, they are all Boolean vectors. So what is this operation really? What is happening over here? I'm going to use these to update a vector U, yeah? So I am currently looking at the kth element of U. And how do I determine the kth element of U? Well, I look at F of J. So I look at the Jth entry over here, right? And I check if a j k, so I look at the kth column over here and I look at the jth entry over here. If f of j is true, that means that the jth element is in the frontier and it has an edge to k, right? That is this particular element. It's the jkth element, right? That's precisely what this is, a j k, right? And I'm, I'm doing this over all the possible values of j. So essentially, I want to check if this is true and this is true, or this is true and this is true, or this is true and this is true, and so on. Right? That's exactly what I'm doing. If any of these pairs is true together, then I update uk to be true, otherwise false. Okay? So does this uh, seem familiar? Does this operation seem familiar? Yeah? Multiplication of what? A and, F. A and F. Yeah, you have to be a little careful. So this is not the true form of the multiplication. So what is multiplication? Instead of products and plus, you are using ands and ors, right? That's fine. That's not an issue. But typically when you multiply a matrix and a vector, what happens? You multiply a row with, you take a dot product of the row with this vector and that goes to element k. But here you want to take a dot product of the column with this vector, right? Well, that's nothing really. All I do is I take the transpose of a, yeah? So if I take the transpose of a, then this, this kth column comes over here, right? And then all I'm doing is I am taking the dot product of this and this to give me the corresponding element of u, okay? Essentially, this is nothing but, if I look at it as a matrix vector operation, it's nothing but matrix vector product, right? With the addition and multiplication being replaced by Boolean operators, right? How can I update u? Well, u is simply A transpose multiplied by F. And here we are using ORs and ANDs, right? This is Boolean matrix vector product, okay? So that gives me u. u is all the nodes that are reachable from the current frontier. So they're all candidates for the next frontier, but not all of them are in the next frontier. Why? 
that have been visited, right? Exactly. So, for instance, when we saw over here, right, 3 was a neighbor of 2, but we did not add it, it is not a part of the new frontier. Why? Because it is already been visited, it is already at level 1. So, how do I know what is my new frontier? So, how do I set my new frontier? So, f prime. Well, there are two conditions. One, it has to be in my u array, right? The other is, it should be infinity in the d array. Means infinity means it is not visited, right? That is what it means. So, you can also keep a visited array, right? If you want to perform purely Boolean operations, right? So, you can keep a visited array and keep on updating it. But for now, let me just write the shorthand u and d not equal to infinity, right? This is shorthand notation. Okay, but otherwise you can keep an array v which is visited nodes. So, this is how I get my new f prime and for the next iteration what do I have to do? I have to set my f to be equal to f prime, right, for the next iteration, okay. And of course, I, I need to do one more thing over here. I need to use f prime to set the level, right. So, let me just erase this for a minute. I want to update the distances, update d with all elements where f prime is equal to 1, right. So, if it is part of the new frontier, then go and update it. How, what do you want to update it with? You want to set d of that element to level plus 1. Right. So, these are going to be part of the next level, right. So, you set them to level plus 1. Yeah, that is it. So, again you can perform this as vector operations if you use Boolean arrays, right. And finally, you have to update level, level is equal to level plus 1, you are going to go to the next iteration, right. So, you have to update level and you have to update f equal to f prime, right. That is the new frontier for the next iteration. Okay, what is your stopping condition? When will you get out of this? How, how long will you continue this for? Until no node is left, right? So, you can simply check that f is equal to 0, right? The new frontier is empty. There is no node in the new frontier, right? That is it. So, in both these conditions, you terminate. Okay, clear?